let me start with you, Susie. Um, is this a, a, a valid debate, um, and is it going too far? Um, well, I'll wait to see how the different sides represent themselves as far as the extremes, if it's too far. But I do think what I find fascinating about this topic is that there is merit to both sides, to each side as they're presented today, in the sense of cisgendered women wanting to patrol the boundaries around the women's movement and, and how we do advocacy and how to organize with a unified sort of front. And there is certainly merit from um, individuals that identify as non-binary or trans, however, just non-binary, non-cisgendered women to have a stake in this argument as well and to want to be included in a woman's movement here in the United States. Kara, why is this issue important to discuss? Well, first, thanks for having me, and thanks for having the conversation. One of the frustrating things about this, you know, I've been working on issues like this for many years now, and it's very difficult to have a conversation in the national in the national media. So thank you so much for doing this. Um, I do just want to say quickly, uh, you know, you in, in your introduction, you said, and, and Susie mentioned, cisgender. So I do not call myself a cisgender woman. I am a woman because I'm an adult human female. And I think that that is a very important part of this conversation. I think it's really important that we be very clear and accurate in the language that we use. So that's why I think this is such an important conversation. Well, I, I do too. And I, and I think a lot of people are confused. And a lot of people are in their hearts say, I, I, I love humanity. I love people. And it matters not to me whether someone is gay or transgender or whatever, but I'm afraid if I ask a question and say something wrong, then they jump up and say, you're transphobic. You don't agree with everything I think. And that's not really been my experience, but I, I do think some people fear talking about it. And so I figure just charge the machine gun nest and let's just get out there and, and talk <laughs> yeah. about it because I, I, I think people do want to talk about this. Sandy, what do you think about this? It's good to see you again, uh, by the way. Good to see you too, Dr. Field. And I'm glad that you said thank you for this conversation because it's good that we're having the conversation. That's the only way we're gonna move forward with it. I think that it's great that um, we're looking at these things because I've been told that I'm not a woman because I can't have a period, I can't have babies, um, but there's actual women who can't do those things too. So it doesn't make them less of a woman. So opening the door to this, it's gonna be amazing. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. And by the way, thank you for the work you do at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That's a, just a wonderful organization and you do great work there. Now, I've, I've heard a lot of women say, look, we fought for the right to vote, practice law, equal pay. Some now feel sidelined due to what they're referring to as the erasure of women. It's like we fought so hard to get all of these rights and are still on a journey. And now that's being eroded, that's being taken away. Is, is that a fair concern? Um, I, it is a concern and there is a case that can be made for it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that in the sense that an underlying assumption of this entire argument is that sex, ma maleness, fem femaleness, male, female, whatever, is the most uh, fundamental difference that makes a difference. And that's simply not true. And when I say that, I mean that there is no such thing as a monolithic category of woman. So when it's like the erasure of women, well, which women? There's so much diversity within that category. And the reality is that most research shows, social scientific research shows that men and women, just broadly speaking, have more in common than they do, than they have differences. The differences emerge along race, class, sexuality, ability, and those sorts of things. I wanna point out, there's something inherently contradictory in what um, Dr. Susie just said, which is that she started out by saying, there's no such thing as a monolithic category called women. That is of course not true, there is. But then she followed up by saying, there are men and there are women which is true. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.